welcome back to Rue's life. So here I am in the polytunnel for this month's pondering from the polytunnel. It's about 28 degrees in the polytunnel today and about 17, 18 degrees outside. So it is actually a cooler day today. We have had some really hot weather. We've also had a little bit of rain, which has been a welcome relief and also great for the, for the ground as well. So the polytunnel and plot are really starting to come into their own now. It's been a slow start, as I know it has for many of you. But you can see, um, I'm just sitting here next to some onions, there's some parsnips that you can't see just out of shot. I've got a whole load of leafy greens behind me. Um, there's all sorts going on in here and I'm really pleased with how it's all coming along. And equally things are starting to come together outside as well. As I say, they're a little bit slower, but they're coming. Everything on the farm is great. You will have recently seen my plot and farm tour. Um, and yeah, everything's just great. It's a, a really nice time of year. So two main issues I've been having with regard to pests. Uh, the pigeon problem that I've been having and also our, everybody's sort of arch nemesis, slugs and um, snails, but predominantly slugs here. Um, the slugs have formed a new habit and they've started actually, if we come out early in the morning, they have started to, I don't know why, but they're all coming and sitting on the outer of the polytunnel, which is absolutely brilliant because they're really easy picking, so we can just pick them off. Um, I have got my beer traps down as well. Now I did actually order some nematodes, but unfortunately the supplier, although they took my order, I then got an email to say that they'd been let down by their supplier and therefore they weren't going to be able to send them. So I've kept my order, but I'm not actually going to get them until July. And they haven't actually given me a delivery date, but I'm going to hold that order so that when they come, I'm going to get those nematodes watered in uh, and that should really help as well. Although the beer traps are doing a reasonable job and if I can just get things fairly established before I plant them out, I do find that they are more likely, even though they get some slug damage, if they're more established plants, then it, it's not so crucial um, or detrimental to the plants. And the pigeon problem, I've taken several measures. So initially I was netting everything. So I was just having to literally put, even around my peas, I was having to put netting. I'm finding now that they're more established, I'm starting to take that netting down. And the other two things that I've put in place, I've started to hang some old CDs on strings and obviously you know they're quite good we know at scaring birds and I bought the owl which I got um, online he's got a bit of a swivelly head it's very lifelike and um, when we opened the box the dogs went nuts they thought it was a real bird it was really quite entertaining um, so I kind of thought if it's realistic enough to kid the dogs I was hoping it would also kid the pigeons and so far, since I've put the CDs and the owl, I haven't, cross fingers, touch wood, I haven't had any more bother from those pigeons, which is great. Um, so I'm really, really chuffed with that. I'm going to do a video on the sort of methods that I use and also with this um, owl. Um, so I will do a video on that um, just to show you um, and for anybody that's interested. It really does seem to be a technique that's working for me, the combination of factors, so that's absolutely great. So other things we've been up to, um, Chris and I had a lovely day yesterday. We've both got um, some time together at the moment. He's not at work. Um, I'm still off work at the moment, but more on that in a little while. But we had an absolutely lovely day. In fact, we've had a few lovely days. We had a day where we drove up to Llangollen, which is near to us, um, and there's some beautiful hills. Um, there's a hill with a like an old castle on top, which is called Dinas Bran. But what we actually did, instead of going up to Dinas Bran, we walked on the opposite side in the hills where there's some old quarries. It's called Trevor Quarries and there's quite a lot of rock climbing there. Chris climbs up there. Um, but we just went for a walk. So we drove up and we'd packed some water and a flask um, and we went for a little poo. So it was really lovely looking across at the views, looking across at Dinas Bran and down to San Gotland. And we saw some gorgeous little lambs um, not newborn but absolutely beautiful watching the lambs and the sheep you know the way they get up into the hills and almost up sheer rock faces it's, it's fantastic to watch them so that was a lovely day um, and yesterday as a, i was starting to say we actually had a lovely day at home pottering about 
and we made some bread which was lovely it's such a lovely mindful process and it was a nice thing to do together so Chris made a um, traditional loaf and I made a garlic and rosemary focaccia and the, the rosemary is rosemary from the garden and then we had a, in the freezer some really nice beef uh, from my sister who produces beef so it's grass-fed beef and it's absolutely delicious and she'll often gift us with some beef so we had a really nice big piece of beef which Chris made um, a lovely roast dinner for us last night but there'll be a lot left over from that this evening we're actually going to the theatre something we've really missed um, during the, the pandemic um, and obviously things are starting to lift slowly now um, so to be able to get to the theatre is absolutely fantastic we go to a fairly local theatre um, whenever we can we both enjoy going I think I've mentioned that previously um, so we're going to see a play which is called For the Grace of You Go I and it's a dark comedy I'm really looking forward to it It'd be nice to you know put something pretty on and um, you know get a little bit dressed up and go to the theatre they've got uh, measures in place so you know with seating they're having less people in the theatre so they can keep social distancing and we have a slot um, a time slot so they can rather than everybody you know shifting past each other to get into their seats they'll be seating us so we can't do that um, and we're going to pack a picnic so we'll pack the cool box um, with some of the beef and um, I've got some cherry tomatoes and the focaccia bread um, and that'll just make a really nice tea after we've seen the show and also I've made some flapjack today as well so we'll pack a picnic, flask of coffee and after we've seen the performance um, we'll, there's some lovely places we can just drive and park up um, and it'll probably be about the time that the sun is setting so we're going to really enjoy a, a sunset picnic after we've seen the performance so that's going to be lovely books that I've been reading. I have finished reading The Book Club by CJ Cooper and I really enjoyed it. It was a little bit predictable but a bit twisty turny and it, it was good. I quite enjoyed it. Quite a clever plot um, so that was good um, and I was actually reading that for a book club that I'm in um, and that is a will be an online group discussion towards the end of the month so I'm really looking forward to that and I've just started reading Country Lovers by Fiona Walker and it's it's really really good so far and um, it's set in the countryside and um, around at the moment um, country people uh, people with horses a stud farm is involved um, and there's lots of different characters already coming out so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where, where it goes so I'm really enjoying that so we've got a helicopter flying above us at the moment so apologies if you can hear that noise um, but they tend to kind of swoop around so if I waited for it to fly over um, it may not actually pass so things that we've been watching um, we've just finished watching the second series of I call it Lupin but I think it's Lupin or somebody I'm sure that speaks French will correct me so it's spelt like the flower Lupin I think it was originally filmed in French and it's dubbed but it's done very well and I we've really really enjoyed it so we enjoyed the first series and as I say we've just finished watching the second season um, and it's really really good well worth a watch I can recommend that and the other thing that we've watched which we've really enjoyed and I surprised myself is Clarkson's Farm and I think that's on Amazon Prime now it's Jeremy Clarkson and I know he's a little bit of a Marmite love him or hate him and I'll be honest I really I'm going to say don't but didn't like Jeremy Clarkson I've never liked anything that he's done I find him very pompous and arrogant and um, some of the news articles um, that have gone out over the years um, about what he said about horses shouldn't be on the road blah 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 he's a very controversial chap isn't he uh, however Chris had said he'd watched an episode to see what it was like and he was convinced I would enjoy it so I said well do you know what I don't want to miss something that might potentially be good but I really wasn't sure anyway the deal was that we would start an episode and if I didn't like it we would switch off I absolutely loved it so if you like the countryside and you're interested in farming or if you don't know much about farming it was very educational he is a bit of a goof and he was goofing around quite a lot but the format was brilliant it was really cleverly done and um, the relationship that he built with um the young lad that he had working on the farm for him so essentially jeremy clarkson buys a farm has no idea what he's doing and is attempting to run the farm and it's really very entertaining and as i say quite educational um and as I say the relationship between jeremy and the chap whose name callum i think 
um, young lad and the, you know quite a difference in, in age and generation um, and obviously Callum although he was very young has a huge amount of knowledge of farming um, so teaching Jeremy what to do really 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 interesting really enjoyed it very entertaining so I can highly highly recommend that and as I said I think that was on Amazon Prime um, I started doing a bit of painting um, I'm I'm no artist and I'm sure I'm not going to win any prizes um, but I've really enjoyed the process and um, so I follow a fantastic couple here on YouTube called Chris and Shell and they're um, they live on a narrow boat and it's the narrow boat chronicles I'll pop a link to their channel in the description do go and check them out they're lovely people it's a gorgeous channel and they're both fabulous artists um, and they've been running monthly competitions which inspired me um, I really enjoyed art um, at school and into my late teens um, but it's just something I haven't done so I've really enjoyed um, I've got myself some cheap bits and pieces and I've started um, painting and I've entered um, two of their competitions now they're doing monthly competitions and the first theme was spring and this month June um, was birds so I've actually entered both. I must say, I don't expect to win any prizes, but it's just a process. I've really, really enjoyed it, especially while I've been off sick. It's been a, a new focus and it's actually been very therapeutic. So I've really enjoyed, I've really enjoyed the process. And that's something that I, I want to continue. I've also just bought some um, Marla beads. So they're, um, there's 108 beads on a string. You'll probably know them as rosary beads. And for anybody that struggles with meditation, so the mala beads are traditionally used by Buddhists uh, and the Buddhist monks. And you, you, those of you that are familiar with, with any rosary beads of that type, you know, you, you work your way through them. Um, and the Buddhists use them very much uh, for their mantras. I have found them really useful. And you're probably aware if you follow me that I'm a great believer in mindfulness meditation anything that connects us or reconnects us with the earth and the elements and anything that helps us to be kinder to ourselves and to live in the moment and it can be quite difficult to meditate so with these beads you can choose a mantra and i choose a mantra that means something to me it, it's just something that i will say to myself sort of an affirmation um, and that's something that will change and you repeat that little mantra or that affirmation with each bead as you move it around through your hands and it's just a lovely mindful meditative process and by the time you've repeated something 108 times it really starts to sink in and you could use the same mantra every day for a week for a month for however long you might only use the same mantra perhaps for a couple of days but it's a process that I want to incorporate into my daily routine and I think it's going to be really really useful going forward so I have a little ritual when I make tea depending on what the tea is so I've got my little glass um, teapot with the stainless steel um, middle that you can pop loose tea into so the mindful process of waiting for the water to boil putting the tea into the teapot pouring the water onto the tea and watching it infuse waiting those moments and minutes for it to infuse the milk going into the cup pouring the tea it's a process and then mindfully drinking that cup of tea and it, it just takes some minutes out of each day but I find it really really grounding and um, I also have been drinking the matcha um, green tea and I make the matcha chai lattes and again it's the process to making that as well as drinking it and I'm actually finding the matcha uh, tea has some really great health benefits as well it's, it's a real it is caffeinated um, and I do generally avoid caffeine but I find that I can get away with one of these it, it seems a slightly different type of caffeine I know that sounds crazy but I'm finding that and I can drink one of those cups a day so I'd like to have one of those in the morning it gives you a real energy boost um, and there's lots of other health benefits that come with it as well and I'm finding it really really helpful and then finally um, as you know if you've been following me I've been off work now it's coming up for four months with these chronic migraines but I managed to see a fabulous neurologist who wanted to start me on this new medication and she presented my case to the board which has been approved i have now started my new medication it's a, an injection which i have to do myself i inject it into my leg and i'll do that monthly but i am almost frightened to say this but so far i think this is going to be life-changing i've had so many years where i've been so poorly and the last couple of years particularly and then since christmas i've just 
barely been well with the migraines and having to miss so much work it, it, it's been really really tough I injected myself on the 8th of the month it's the 22nd today as I film this so it'll be the 23rd um, when you watch it and for eight days after my first injection I had eight clear days no migraine no pain it was absolutely phenomenal I still feel as though I'm starting to get one and I get some of the other symptoms but it just doesn't come to the pain and that is so livable with and since the eighth up until today I've only had three days where I've had pain on two of those days it was a really you know it was, it was very manageable and bearable and just one of those days um, it, it started to creep off the scale um, and I had to take some extra medication but my goodness me I'm hoping that this is going to continue and in that vein of hopefully it continuing um, I've been talking with um, or communicating with my GP and my neurologist and my line manager um, I've got an interview tomorrow with um, health and safety from work and I'm also being put in touch with occupational health and they'll need to have a little chat with me as well but we are planning my phased return to work from the first of next month so from the first of July I should be starting my journey back to work and I'm so so excited about that I've missed it so much um, you know it's a massive part of, of who I am and what I do and, and I really am so so fortunate to be able to have a career that I love so much um, I'm so passionate about it and it's been really tough you know it's been like a punishment to not be able to go and do one of the things that I love so much so the thought of being able to return to work get back to doing what I love you know when I'm not here on the farm or pootling about doing other things oh, it just fills me with such joy so I'm hoping that we're taking steps towards my journey of getting back to some form of normality I mean what a couple of years it's been with the pandemic with my health uh, we've had such peculiar weather I mean the start of this season has just been crackers but you know what things are looking up I'm feeling so much better in myself the weather has pepped up it's actually hotting up now so bear with me So just while I've been sitting here, it's actually crept up to 35 degrees here in the polytunnel and 20 degrees outside. Now part of the reason it shot up a little in here is I did actually shut the door uh, behind me because it was blowing a bit of a hoolie, which is lovely and cool for the plants, um, but I wanted to be able to film. So that's why the temperatures popped up a little in here. So I'm going to end this video here. I'm going to get that door open so my poor plants aren't wilting. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all getting on with the things in life that you love and that you enjoy. Love to hear from you all in the comments below. Anything that you'd like to chat about, anything that I've covered today, or anything that you'd like to talk about in the future. Um, and thank you so much to you all for, for following me, for watching my videos, um, and for the interaction, genuinely, from my heart. Thank you so much. It's been a really rough few months, and you guys that keep coming back and keep watching and keep interacting, um, have really really helped me through a difficult time so thank you thank you so much for that so take care and i'll see you all again soon